Lots going on. Lots going on. Healthcare. We're, we, yesterday in the House, presented the three committees that have main jurisdiction over the legislation presented a working outline of what the health care reform bill would look like with its principal, the principal goals of this legislation would be to corral costs which continue to skyrocket, to make sure everyone has a choice of providers. You like your doctor, you should be able to keep your doctor. If you don't like your doctor, you should be able to go to a, new, a different doctor. And then finally, provide access to those providers to Americans, all Americans, because we have some 48 million who don't have health insurance. Those are the three principal goals that we have in the House legislation. The Senate, very similar. Different legislation they're working on. And they have two committees that are working on two different bills. In the House, we, we all three committees came together and said, let's try to come out with just one bill to, to speed the process along rather than trying to work out our differences later on. It's a long process. It's a complicated process. We're told by the Congressional Budget Office and the, and the Legislative Office that our bill will likely be over 800 pages long. It's because you're making all sorts of changes to existing law, whether under, uh, under Medicare, under Medicaid, and you're changing all sorts of provisions to make, for example, changes. We're gonna, we have one of the provisions we think is essential is to make sure that no insurance company can discriminate against individuals based on gender. Right now, if you're a woman and you're a certain age, I can almost guarantee you you're paying more for your health insurance than is a man the same age, even if that man is in worse health than you are. We're also going to try to make sure there's no more dis discrimination based on a pre-existing condition. I know many of you probably uh, uh, experienced this where you can't get insurance or you can't leave a job and try to get new insurance because you have a you or someone in your family has a pre-existing condition, a heart condition, cancer, something that the insurance company says, no, I, I'd rather not have you. We're going to try to eliminate any discriminatory practices based on pre-existing condition. We also believe it's essential that Anyone in America who has insurance should be able to take that insurance wherever they go. So if you want to change a job, if you need to move, you should be able to have insurance wherever you go. This legislation to try to provide that cost containment, to try to make sure you have that choice of provider, and to try to make sure we make it accessible, quality health care accessible to all Americans, is probably going to cost around $100 billion a year to make sure we do that. Now, many of us believe that that's going to actually save us a lot of money in the long run. You have family, you're going to move to a new place, you need to find a place to live. Up front, if you're going to buy a home, you have to put down a lot of money. In the long run, though, it pays off for you, especially if that house in the long run makes has appreciated in value. But up front, there's a big cost. Well, the way the budget office operates in Congress is we have to show all the costs up front. So we have to show that we're making the down payment on this health care. So it's about a hundred billion dollars every year. Now if we provide health care to 50, uh, 48 million Americans who don't have it now, instead of using the emergency room to get their preventative care, they'll now be able to go to a doctor ahead of time. They'll now be able to get their immunizations for their kids. That's going to keep them healthier. We're going to save money from doing that. But we get no credit in terms of dollars for doing that because you, the, the Congressional Budget Office, the uh, analysts and the economists will say it's a guess as to how much we'll save. But we know up, up front, if you extend coverage immediately to somebody, that's going to cost you up front. That we know. So all the costs we have to show and pay for, all the savings that are going to come, we can't yet reflect them. So what is $100 billion a year in cost will come down. I think we're going to save. We have the most expensive health care in the world right now by a factor of at least two compared to most countries. And so we have more than enough money going into the system. We're just not getting great health care out of it. So do I think we're going to save? Absolutely. It's just a very inefficient, disconnected system. So we have to pay for that. And, and the President, President Obama has said, and the Congress has said, at least the, the majority in Congress has said, we're going to pay for this because we have such massive deficits right now in the federal budget that we can't just sort of say, we'll let, our, we'll let our kids pay for it later on. 
And so we have to tackle a number of issues. We have people who are opposing us in trying to extend health care to everyone. We have companies and individuals opposing us in saying we, we, we will get rid of these pre-existing condition requirements. We have companies and individuals opposing us in saying you cannot discriminate based on gender anymore or other factors. And so there's some who want to keep the status quo. We're being told, oh, you can't get rid of that pre-existing condition. As insurance companies, we need to, we, we can't just take anybody because we'll go out of business if we have to offer coverage to someone who's got cancer. Or we'll go out of business if this person's had two heart attacks and then we are required to cover that person because it'll cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars to provide health care. Or there is no way that we can offer health insurance to someone who has advanced diabetes because it'll cost too much and we, we're, we're ongoing business and we can't survive. Some of that's true, but because of that, what we find is that the healthier, wealthier, or younger you are, you can get insurance coverage. Before 1965, most seniors, when they retire from work, live the rest of their life in poverty. After 1965, and by the way, before 1965, there was already Social Security. But it wasn't until after 1965 that you saw the poverty rates for seniors dropped to less than eight, seven or eight percent. Before that, they were in the 30 to 40 percent range of seniors who were retired. Why did it drop so dramatically? Because in 1965, everyone who was 65 and over qualified to have health insurance until they died under Medicare when we passed Medicare in 1965. Half of all bankruptcies by individuals in this country today are due principally to a medical catastrophe or some kind of medical situation that occurred in the family and drove people into bankruptcy. And so you have to figure out what you do. Insurance companies say, we're not in business to offer the poorest, the oldest, and the sickest health care. What we're trying to do is try to connect what we're trying to do with what your experience has been. Because I know we're going to get a lot of blowback for some of the things we're trying to do. I want to contain costs. Right now, Medicare, the, the, uh, the budget for Medicare is growing very fast. Right now, for those of you who have insurance through your employer, you're finding that you're paying more and more out of your own pocket. Or you're not getting any salary, you're not getting a wage or salary increase because you're putting your money into your benefits. More and more, we're spending money on health care. Today, 18% of everything we produce in this country, our economic capacity, our GDP, gross domestic product, is spent on health care. In most other industrialized countries of the world, it's half. 30 year, year, about 40 years ago, it was 5%. In another 15 years, they say it's going to get to about 25%. One of every $4 that this country produces will be spent simply to give health care to our public. Most of that money for health care is spent in the last six months of life. I think it's close to 70, 75%. Of all we spend, of every health care dollar in America spent on the last six months of Americans' lives. Too little is spent on the first six months. And unfortunately, we have a big cliff when, when people turn adults, 18 to 24, then you see a big drop off in health insurance because that's when people become more independent also have a d difficult time finding a job that has insurance a attached to it. Give me your stories. I'd love to have your stories because I'd love to be able to relate what we're doing to your experience. I also may find that through your experiences, I may think differently about some of the things that we're looking to do. So help us out. I want to be able to respond too to some of those folks who are the naysayers about some of these things. How important it is, for example, to, n to not discriminate based on pre-existing condition. I think it's absolutely essential. I don't believe that we can have a system where we let insurance companies pick the winners, the healthiest, the wealthiest, the youngest, because health care is not like a commodity. We, have to, we live with health all our lives, hopefully good health, and so we have no choice. We have to keep our health up. Your stories would be very helpful.